What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. I'm going out for lunch right now. Family needs food. My older daughter is actually in <laughs> an ambulance right now. I need a ambulance. Doing unpaid training, being an EMT. And to do that, you have to ride around in an ambulance with the other EMTs and just get about five or so incidents. So if somebody calls, you go and help. So, even if she was here, she wouldn't eat the food I give her. So I only have to feed two girls and me. We're on the zero FXE today. Nice head. Man, that was a nice Honda. I like that. Hey, what's up, man? So, yeah, today I had something I wanted to talk to you about. Let me go fast. Yeah, so why I waited this light, let's talk about what's on my mind. I have a Kawasaki Versus X 300. It is a 300cc adventure motorcycle it's released in 2017 and i don't believe they made many changes the current model looks army colors it's super awesome but i got a 2017 and it's it's a wonderful adventure bike because it's lightweight and they basically took like a ninja 300 engine put it in there tuned it down a bit so it still has the high rev range but it drives like a Jeep. <laughs> so you can take it off road, you can take it on the highway, it's great. It goes, you know, 80, 85, no problem. So I can keep up with traffic, I can mostly pass, you know, if I rev it high. You don't have to. She likes to be in the mid-red range, around five to eight. So I've been seeing on YouTube the MT450. It is a CF Moto adventure bike. And most of the CF Moto stuff that you've seen at least in the past few years, has always been under the moniker of KTM. They use them as a manufacturer for their engines, but so a lot of Europeans are just kind of, you know, normalized with that. There's a lot of Chinese bikes in Africa, for example. Having a Chinese motorcycle is kind of interesting. Brake check. If you're curious if a single disc worked, it does. Especially on a lightweight bike like this. The reason I bring it up is that I saw both European YouTubers I know and some I don't know all enjoyed their rides. And the one spec that was crazy to me is it's a 450cc engine but it weighs the same <laughs> as my Kawasaki versus X300. So they're both 389, 390 pounds. The difference is that one has a 450 engine. What's up, man? Harder than snow, oh, yeah, get them done. So what I don't understand is how are they the same weight, but a completely 150 cc's more power. If somebody could explain that to me, That'd be great, because if you look at this other specs of the MT450 by CF Moto, it has all kinds of wonderful road additions and stuff. Their Barkbuster handlebars are plastic, <laughs> but beyond that, I mean, it looks amazing. And they're calling it the unicorn bike. And Born a Goon had, a, I think, a very good philosophical video of why there's not a 50-50 unicorn bike. It doesn't mean there isn't room for continued innovation. I just look at that and I'm just blown away at how it could have all that with the same weight. So I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a hardware guy, I'm a software guy, so somebody could explain that, that would, that would really help me understand. That's one problem. And that different spokes guy, up in Canada, he had a really good point about that. One thing he said that I thought was fascinating is he said he came from a 
communist country and that you can't really blame the people who don't have any power to make the change. And so he was citing the Kove guy and the CFF Moto guys and they just are passionate about motorcycles and they love it. And so everything in America, <laughs> even making America great again hats, are built in China. They're made in China. And so it's just ridiculous to think that you can escape punishing the country by fighting with your dollar, which I don't believe. I've seen companies who've frustrated American public and they're just, you know, they've gone downhill. So for example, like even the Zero, right? Which is made in America. It's electric, it's innovative. Even this bike, they started to outsource some of it overseas just for cost reasons. They have to, that's the world we live in. Americans aren't gonna pay for American made. They say they will, but they're a minority that actually has the money and can do that. Why would I get that over the Versus Sec? How does it accomplish 150 cc more than the Kawasaki Versus Sec 300? And what happens when they take the Ninja 500 engine, which is actually a 451 cc, and they update the Versus to that? How would that work? Because it kind of competes with the 650, even though it's more dirt worthy and lightweight. So that'll be interesting. I know Chronicles of Solid was talking about where is the Versus X400, but I don't think that engine would get past EPA where I think the other one would. <gasps> Let's go home. So I'm apparently a burrito deliverer from Moe's. I'm not Uber Eats. I could only do maybe two to three deliveries on this bike. <laughs> Unless you like were really gentle with it and drove it like a scooter, which is not, not what I'm gonna do. And off we go. Supposed to be like 96 today. Even going 20 miles an hour feels amazing. <laughs> it's not 96 yet, but it's it's getting there. This intersection is the worst. On this bike, it is the best. Because only this bike can pull off these crazy techniques. What up? Now to be clear, I don't need another adventure bike. <laughs> I actually want a sport bike, even though I don't want a sport bike. I know it'll get me in trouble. This thing is bad enough with its massive amounts of torque and the uh, ability to go anywhere. At least with a sport bike, I'd be forced to stay on the street where this thing I can go on grass, curbs, stairs, dirt, even with street tires. But I did like the fact that very similar to the Japanese in the 80s and 90s, coming out with these cars that Americans were like, why would I buy American? You know, these are reasonably priced and they last forever. The repairs are a little expensive. That's a harder right there, right there. Had to lay her down. So yeah, it's definitely exciting if CF Moto's bike, or bikes I should say, really disrupt the manufacturers, the Japanese ones, and, and get them to, you know, up their game. Definitely be nice. I love my Versus to be clear, but wow, the MT has some nice uh, amenities. Amenities. And off we go. another strange thing too for context I remember when people were saying that the Versus X300 just doesn't have enough get up and go like they have to you know s squeeze the throttle all the way to barely make it go up a hill I'm like if I downshift to five she's fine if I'm on the highway on a hill on sixth gear she's fine 
So the only thing I could suspect is that a lot of these people doing YouTube videos are angry that if it's not a 650, then it has no power. Especially the sport bike videos. When I drove a Ninja 400 that I rented, that thing was amazing. Super fast, super get up and go. And I remember a lot of people saying it just doesn't have the power they need. And it leads me to believe that every sport bike video I saw must have been a sport bike Jixer bro who's just like minimum 650. Ooh, what's up, man? Man, that's nice. So yeah, when I see the Himalayan 450, I think the same thing. I know that they wanted extra power and some people were a little disappointed, but I look at that and I'm like, that looks really fun. To give you some context, I'm a software developer. And in software, everything has trade-offs. So what I want to know is, what are the trade-offs between the MT450 and the Versus X300? How is it that they can get the same weight all those amenities and extras with 150cc more and have the same weight. There's got to be a trade off there somewhere. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. I'd love to figure it out. This is Jesse Warden on the Zero FXE signing off.